Hello friends, I'm excited to be with you again on another episode of Real Woman with Nikki Adiemi. Thank you for tuning in and you know what, we're going to have an amazing time. Um, I trust that you are going to be impacted, blessed and you know, you're going to have answers to some questions in your heart. So call your friends, tell them to tune in to this station at this time. You know what, we'll take a short break and we'll be back right after this. Hello friends, welcome back. I have with me here Neoma, and we are going to be looking at um, questions that viewers have sent in over time. We're going to be answering those questions. And um, before we go into that, I'd like to read to us some feedback from our viewers. I'm so grateful that viewers take time to write us and you know, make comments about our program. One says, thank you for this program. It has helped to put my house in order. Please keep it up. I believe other lives are also touched. Another person said, thank you, Pastor Nike, for your program that you anchored today. You are a blessing to humanity. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you. Now, let's dive into the questions that we have today. Okay, Neoma. so our first question for today says, how do I help my children desire to use their talents to benefit others and themselves? Wow, that's, that's an interesting one. Um, children, I'm glad this person knows that um, children come with talents, yeah. they have talents. So no child is born without a gift or a talent. Now, to you, how does she use or how does he use their yeah. talents to benefit others? First of all, it's important to acknowledge, to watch, to pay attention and try and notice what your child is, you know, talented with. Let that child develop the talent at home. The child that, you know, drums on your pots and pans, you should know that that child has some kind of music in him mm -hmm. or her, you know. Um, don't neglect the child and say, what? no, I don't want you to become a musician. You must become a lawyer. No, just encourage, encourage. And then you begin to let the child know that um, you have been giving these gifts not for yourself, but to benefit other okay. people, to benefit other people. When you give a child that perspective, the child begins to realize that um, the gifts are not to be enjoyed <laughs> just by him or alone. I mean, if a child has musical talent, can yeah. play the guitar, can sing, you go beyond just singing for yourself. You go beyond just playing the guitar in your room, enjoying it. The child has to understand that you need to be part of a larger community. You need to be part of a team, whether at school, at, at church, church, or wherever. You need to be part of a team. You know, even if you want to go solo, every child must realize, you must let your child realize that these gifts are to benefit humanity. Okay? And... Uh, Begin to look for yes. opportunities. opportunities. Begin to look for opportunities, teams to enroll in, um, encourage your child to step forward. I know some children are eager to step forward to use their gifts for the community, you know, in school. Oh, who wants to be in the play? Some children yeah. have jumped out. <laughs> Sometimes some children, they can do it. More expressive. But they are, some children know they can reserved. do it, but they're reserved. So you need to you see, so encourage you need to tell them. your child, hey, join that team put in for that play, you know, just encourage the child. And from there, the child begins to get used to serving Being others. Yes. To do it for with other their people. gifts until they take it to, you know, even very high levels. I mean, I had to learn that. I had to learn that my children's uh, musical talents were not for me. They were mm. not for us in the True. house alone, <laughs> you know. They will leave the house one day and be part of wider communities. Mm. They'll be part of maybe another family, their own family that they would have. And those are the ones that will enjoy Joy. the gifts. Very I won't enjoy the gift anymore, you know. So it's all about giving them perspective. Yeah, yeah. very true. Because I remember um, a friend whose son used to play at school. Hmm. Now, one of the parents uh, saw him and had a program coming up and decided, please, can your son come and play the national anthem mm. for us there? And he composed on the piano and with his saxophone. And when he finished at that, it was a huge program. 
because he had been offering his talent talents huh? and gifts at school, it was easy for him to do it at a, that level, in a larger audience. And it was Excellent. fantastic. Everybody stood up. They were giving him a round Excellent. of applause. Excellent. And I'm sure he's going to make it big in big. life. Big, yes. Good. Yeah, That's is. a classic example. All right. Good. Another one says, is God displeased when we play it safe and refuse to take risks in um, life generally? Well, I know one thing God is displeased about um, in the Bible, in the book of um, Hebrews 11, 5, he says that um, he's pleased with us when we, take, when we act in faith. God wants us to act in faith. You know, the person that does not act in faith, the person that keeps doubting, that I know God is not pleased about. Mm. So if we equate that to um, taking risks, if we say walking in faith, stepping out in faith is taking risks, then I think God is excited when we take risks. Mm. But you know, risks in the right direction, risk with wisdom, not just risk about anything. We shouldn't take a risk on our children and saying, okay, whether I pay attention or not, I, I'm going to risk it. This child will turn out fine. I'm going to <laughs> risk it and send this child to any school, even though you know this school is terrible, but you're like, I'm risking it. Go to that terrible school. I'm risking it. Let this child hang out with terrible f association of friends. <laughs> but we believe what we're saying is stepping out. You know you have an idea. You know you've been given. You know you received an idea, but you're afraid. You don't want to take those. You're holding back. You're holding back. I think that's where the displeasure comes from your creator because he gave you the idea. He gave you the talent but you are not using it, mm. you know. And there's stories in the Bible, the story of the man that went, you know, three men were given talents by their master. Talents then was a currency that they used. And he gave out talents to them, one five, and he gave one, f he gave one, 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 gave one five, and he gave one, one two. Two, yes, one, two, and five. And well, they all did different things. <laughs> the one that got two and the one that got five, those ones invested, they used with it, the they used the money, they traded they had, with it. Yeah. So if we imagine this as gifts, like talents that we've been given, not money, um, then they did well. But the one that was given one, he did, he did nothing with it. He did not even invest it. He didn't even take it to the bank <laughs> and let the bank do the work of multiplying it. I was so lazy and wicked. So if we, I believe that if we look at that story and we liken it to the gifts that we've been given, if we don't develop them and if we do not use them or share mm. them with others, I kind of have a feeling, according to my relationship with God, I feel like I would be cheating. I won't be, I'll be sinning. <laughs> That's my perspective. So I think, yes, God... Don't doesn't like it when we don't take risk with what he has given us. Well, there are some people who have this fear. It's like venturing out to the unknown. Like, mm. how do I even start? It, it can be tricky for them because it's a territory that they've never been. Hmm. So how do they break out of that? First of all, I want them to have perspective. Um, if you read the word of God and you grow in your relationship with God, you will know that you have no choice but to trust him and to lean on him. And you have to trust people too, to a certain extent. I'm not saying put your entire life in people's hands. Yes, people will fail. They can promise this and they don't show up, you know. But life is about risk because mm. without risk, we will not experience Nothing. change. True. Think about this. Um, it was a risk. Someone risked their life. That's why you were born. Someone risked their life. They risked their life in conceiving mm -hmm. you. Even if you say you were conceived <laughs> illegitimately, there's no illegitimate child. There's nothing like that, okay? But I'm just saying that even if you feel that your parents or whoever gave birth to you or whatever, they didn't even plan to have you. Maybe they just had a fling or whatever. <laughs> the fact is that that itself was a risk. Mm. <laughs> if they slept with each other and they didn't plan, that was the risk. 
And even for those who are married, to say, okay, when well, I want to start a family and have a child, it's still a risk. Mm. They don't know what the child, would the child be normal, would the child be. be, they don't even know whether they will lose their life in the process. The woman doesn't even know whether there'll be complications. Life is a risk. Everything is a risk. Waking Stepping up Stepping out a of risk. your house is a risk. Yes. When you wake up, you're like, you wake up and you're like, I'm still in this world, <laughs> in this city, in this country, wherever country you are. You could feel at risk, yeah. depending on how risky or how stressful the situation in your, in your country or in your life around you. So we don't know, many of us don't know that we're taking risks every day, but it's not the kind of risks that, you know, where they, they, they feel that, you know, if it's a planned yes, risk, they an idea, the yes, risk. or they feel it's a, it's a risk, I have no choice. When you step into your car and you drive to work, some of you have to drive 15 minutes, 20 minutes, some even up to two hours. You commute every day. It's a risk. But you say, well, that's not a risk because I have no choice. Well, anything could have happened. If you don't get in your car or take the transport or whatever mode of transportation to get to work, then you're risking losing your job. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have no job, you're already taking a risk with your life because that you'll be the, hungry and you'll die rest of, of your life going hunger. To be like so life is a risk. We've got to take a chance of, on mm. people and we've got to do it afraid. Do it. It means in spite of your fear, do what you've got to do because sometimes you don't even know if that thing was, you know, meant to be. Mm. And again, if you're not sure and you've waited for so long, should I do it? Should I not do it? It's a good idea. It's a great idea. Still step out because by stepping out, by taking mm. the risk of step, stepping out, then you will know eventually if you were meant to do it or not. If you're not meant to do it, you will know. Someone may say, but then that would have been a waste of time because you have said, but then you but probably would never have known. And then you will know, okay, I'm not meant to do that. Um, you know, so I think people should not take life so you know, seriously yeah. to the point of not being a blessing to others. In life, generally, um, people would keep asking questions, looking at you, watching you on TV. They might have some questions like, Personally, actually took a risk, and she, for her to get to the point where she is today, how did it, was it a build-up? What was it like at the beginning? Okay, you know, like I was saying, taking risks should be a normal part of our lives. And I remember many, many years ago, you know, I was just touched by girls standing by the seats, uh, streets selling their bodies, and I took the risk to try and reach them. You know, and I did my investigations and all that. I took the risk of going into a brothel on a beautiful sunny day like that. And I went in and tried to look for someone to talk to. And the rest is history because today we now, you know, this ministry really now reaches out to girls who need shelter, girls who have been abandoned, you know, and um, just taking care of people. And even going on the media, going on television as well was a risk because it's like, what if I don't have support anymore? What if I don't have partners? What if I don't have funding? What if I don't have support? What if nobody views? What if there are no viewers? What if it's a boring show? Well, and that, what if nobody sends email to write us back? And you know, what if it's a flop? You know, but I took the risk and started because I believe that, one, I had a message, two, I believe that, um, it would be right to use the platform of media to help people. And here we are today. So life is about taking risks. And I encourage you viewers, you know, there's anyone out there, you're really contemplating, you know, there's this idea you have or there's this thing you want to do or maybe you want to move from your city where you are to another city or to another state or even another country. And you've thought about it. You, you know you should, but you feel it's a risky venture. Yes, it is, but you never know what is waiting for you on the other side of that risk. You really don't know the beauty and the, the connections, the relationships, the world out there that is waiting for you by taking that risk, by taking that step. You know, people who refuse to take risks remain in their comfort zone and they remain mediocre. Okay, sorry, you're not mediocre, but you know what? If you want to live an amazing life, Take a risk. Do it afraid. We'll be back right after this break. Welcome back. Now let's dive in to the rest of the questions. Nyoma. All right. So the next one says, Hi there. I live in South Africa. I came across your program on TV. Wow. It really spoke to my innermost being. I have had an urge to do exactly what your organization is doing for South African women for over 10 years now. I've had nights, days, and weeks of no sleep, 
wrestling with this for so long. I would love to start something like this, but please tell me how to go about it. This is from H. Robinson. Okay. Um, well, and she's based in South, South Africa. Africa. This is an interesting question. And it's so interesting coming on the heels of us talking about taking risks. risks yeah. So it's time to step out. It's time for this person to just step out in faith and do what she has to do. You know, um, there's nothing that really comes easy in life. And really, after you have kept a vision in your heart for so long, she said 10 years or so, mm. in your heart for so long, and has had sleepless and nights. And has sleepless nights. So obviously, you have to move out of your comfort zone because obviously, if you don't do it, it looks like you won't be fulfilling your life mission or passion. You know. So, hey, I would say, step out, start from where you are. Just start from where you are. If it's um, yes, reaching women, what kind of women do you want to reach? Do you want to reach them one on one? Do you want to go on the media like I am on the media now? Or do you want to start with, um, you know, having meetings where you speak to them face to face? Or do you want to use social media? Or do you want to go out physically, um, just reaching out and touching lives, providing things for those who are in need? You need to sit down, have a plan, you know, yeah. map out your plan, write what your needs are, you know, write the vision, just write what you're seeing in your mind. Because you will need to share this with other people who would run with you, those who will be interested, those who will say, oh, wow, I like this thing that you're, you want to do, this thing you're thinking of doing. I will support you this way or that way. So they must know what you, um, what you want to do. You must be able to break it down. That's where people can say, okay, I'll help you with this or I'll help you with that. You know? Some will help with their time and energy, not necessarily just money. You know, so it's so important to start. Just start from where you are, start small, but it's important to have a plan, you know, and tell people about it. And I tell you, it will begin to unfold. Mm. It will begin to unfold, you know. In South Africa there, if you have someone that is rich in women, you, you know, if the person is accessible, if you need to go physically to such organizations to understand what they're doing. Why not? Because it's very useful to have mentors mm. as well, you know. If you were around us here, right here in and where we're, we are located in Lagos, Nigeria, and of course we also have um, another office in Atlanta in the U.S., I would have said, okay, just come and see what is going on. But in South Africa there, I'm yeah. sure you have lots of examples, you know. So, hey, I wish this person well and all the best. You know, I started out, I took the risk, and I believe that as you do so, you know, you will succeed in this en endeavor. Yeah. yeah. It's Any important. Other it's yeah, important. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have another question. It says, how can I best use my time to make a difference? This person hmm. seems to, maybe, uh, well, I'm imagining that mm -hmm. you probably have so much time and you're not sure Hmm. how to be productive in, yeah. in, in that time. Or it could also be someone who has a lot of talent, a lot of things that they're not even sure. Where do how I, to, you know, ex yeah. um, channel my time to? That is more important. So Yes. I mean, that's a very just open-ended question, really. But I'm glad this person has recognized or realizes that they need to, you know, use their time to what make a difference in the world in the community in people's lives i think it's just basically by one creating that time carve out niche of time um, look at what gifts you have been endowed with what is your passion what do you like to do and then begin to um, impact people's lives you know do you like to um, speak? Do you like to draw? Are you into art? Are you into music? We talked about music earlier mm. on. You know, are you good with figures and calculations? Do you like uh, mathematics, for example? Um, many children struggle with maths. You might begin to teach yeah, children maths. You don't tutorials. even have to be a structured teacher in a school. But you, may, you know, so just in using your time to make a difference, you've got to look at what talents you have been given. Mm. Time and talents it goes together because if not, 
you might just be doing what a you're lot not of enjoying. things are yes, not really exactly. making so first of all is your talent what gifts do i have and then you create the time do you have a nine to five job use your nine to five job to make a difference by you know being different in that organization mm. but if you're talking about things like volunteer work you know or just outside the zone of your nine to five then look at the talents you have that you probably are not even using at work and um, tell yourself okay if it's writing mm. um that okay every night i'm going to invest 30 minutes or one hour of writing until a book is ready and that book will definitely make a difference in the mm. world Very or true. you may say every weekend i'm going to take out an hour and go visit an orphanage or go visit you know um people who are less privileged to put smiles on their faces or yeah so many ways you know once you've identified your talent and your gifts then create time don't you know um have a very large grandiose vision mm. of oh i'm going to spend all the whole day on mm -hmm. saturday doing this just take it in small steps and as you enjoy it you're going to want to add more to the time that you give in making a difference in people's mm. lives yeah yeah that's you know, so it's such true. a good thing yes to to be able to do that people must learn to give back you know and um, that's our world isn't it <laughs> i mean a lot of people think i'm only on tv on the media like we are doing right that now because a lot of people but, think oh until you have a pulpit or you have uh, uh, some kind of audience that no. that's when you're really yeah. making a difference. difference we do lots of things i mean like it's just that i can bring everything about real woman foundation or real woman international into the studio there's an orphanage there's a home for ladies that have been on the streets um there's the outreach well, we for have, girls. Yes, there's the outreach for girls, for girls only, which I know you're a part of. You've been a volunteer with us for many years. You yeah. Know. yeah. Talk a little bit about how you've been able it, to, it's, through the FGO of mm. the Real Woman <laughs> Foundation, um, make a difference. It's an awesome experience because sometimes you just find uh, some of the girls, you just spend a few, we spend a few hours with them and it's like, oh, and in, schools, I don't, in schools, we go, don't to, know we go to secondary schools to talk to girls about their self-esteem, about um, how they see themselves and so that they don't become victim of sex, um, sexual yeah. abuse. And the and age bracket. All of the the age about? bracket is usually between 10 um, and, 10 and uh, 16, 16 about that, sometimes 17. So you see some of them and they, they, they are amazed that people that are older are still keeping themselves still focused in life and it's such a difference because sometimes it's like oh i'm going through a lot of stuff by myself and nobody cares and then you yeah. see these people who are telling you you can do it you have what it takes and it's a huge difference in their yes. life sometimes yes. you we may not be on tv yes. Yes. but it makes all the yes. difference in the little ways excellent little and ways. i want to say thank you for volunteering your time over and over again you know there's another aspect of our um, of our work at the Real Woman Foundation based in Lagos, Nigeria. And we also are beginning to do that also at the Real Woman International uh, based in Atlanta, USA. Um, and it's the life skills. We have the life skills um, initiative um, where people come to learn um, skills, vocational skills. So we have um, trainings running like bead making, mm. event decoration. People learn how to cook certain dishes, make pastries, cakes. People who are um, who have talents and gifts in these areas, who ha uh, have businesses in these areas, um, who are authorities authorities in these areas, they want to give back. Mm. So they volunteer. That okay, whenever you are you want to run. Um, how I to write a proposal, skills. or you want to run soap making, I make soap, I know how to do that. Or you want to teach people how to bake it, you know, cakes and pastries, I'm up for that. And so, of course, we let people know that, hey, the next edition, we're yes. going to be teaching this, this, and this. And people 
come and they learn and that way women are empowered because some of the skills they have acquired there or that they have sharpened there they mm. go out and they start their businesses you know and i'm so excited that even um this year just very soon around the corner we are starting you know the same thing in the real woman international in atlanta you know we're going to be having someone has volunteered to teach makeup mm. so we're going to have just a few hours That's awesome um, well let us know the days but we're just going to have a few hours of um free makeup tutorials as well as business tips business start-up tips because when people learn the makeup or they learn how to do they need how do they not turn to... into a business what we want is for women to be empowered especially those who have been out there abused or who don't even have any form of you know support so really use your time to make a difference in people's lives you know and you know go on our website join us and just find ways in which you can help us to also make a difference wow I think this has been an awesome day for me, an awesome broadcast. And I hope for the viewers as well, I hope you have been impacted and I hope you've taken something, you know, away from the broadcast today. Even though, yes, we've just been looking at questions, but it has really been a time of conversation with you, you know, and with each other. I like to leave you with these words, you know, don't just sit there until you're waiting. Don't sit there doing nothing. Move inside move you can be in a better place think ahead move inside and then you will move outside then you'll be able to live an amazing life put that idea to action this week until i come your way next time stay blessed and keep shining bye for now